Little P is our pet baby elephant. He was orphaned a while ago and Greg saved him. Um, he is just such a little joy in our lives and every so often we try and get some quality time in with him. He's a little fat as well and overweight. I think he munches a bit too much and I tend to be a bit of a spoiler. So it's good to go on a little walk with him, get some exercise and just, yeah, have some bonding time. I want to go to Katruza and just get some some mini meal and stuff. Okay, yeah. No, I want to try and try out that uh, that rice that you can make with the maize. Yeah. No, I've had it before. It's delicious. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to go there. I think we do have a really strong connection with the wildlife here. We, we, we love our animals. We love our dogs. We've, we love Panyami. I love being in the bush. I love, I love nature. It's, it's, it is, it's, uh, this is my life and I, I really do enjoy it here. So today I am on the way to one of the villages that is close by in the area and I am going to go and get involved in some real African culture and spend a day there and just get into the vibes. Maswera se? Maswera se? Maswera? So whenever I go into the villages, it's quite special. A lot of the younger children have never seen a white person before, so they're really intrigued and interested, and they kind of come up to me and grab my hair and just are mesmerized, really. So it really is quite something, and it definitely puts a smile on my face. Oh, what a little cutie pie. Look at these cheeks. Huh? How old is she? <laughs> they don't know. Ini lo bout. Bout are coop. Ah, bouty. Hey, boy, How are you? I'm fine. Right, I need some chibagi. Okay. You can show me. All right, let's go. Uh, so this is the chibagi. Yes. This one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mafushwa. Yes. Okay. Minutes. So how do you take it off here, though? Ah, uh, you can take it, but not this one. What you want? Oh, okay. Yeah. Regarding this one. Oh, uh, here we go. Just explain to her, I will buy from her, hey? Okay. Just a little bit. I want to take it home, I want to cook it. Okay. For us, it's just, we're going to hit the pizza joint or the pasta joint and just order a meal and pay for it. And I think it's really admiring to see how food, again, something I'm so passionate about, is what keeps their lives ticking. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing at me. Okay, I'm gonna go. Let me take my glasses off. Just hold these for me, Bart. Okay, right. Close. Okay. <laughs> Well, now it looks like mini meal. Yes. Check. One check. No, she's too fast for me. Ah, oh, well done. Baita <laughs> Basa. Thank you, Bart. Uh, thank you. Man. I'll see you soon, eh? Zakanaka. Okay. Tatenda. Bye bye. Evening guys, I am chilling in the middle of the bush. I can hear birds and all sorts of creatures around me. I really feel like I'm in the middle of Africa. It's fabulous. 
I got inspired by my trip to the village this afternoon and I decided that I needed to use this awesome rice that I got made, well, I made as well. Um, and what I thought would be the best accompaniment for it was a stew. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chop up my onion, cut it into pretty decent sized pieces. This is gonna make our flavor base. So this first part of the stew is kind of really important. That's, that is the flavor base. So we gotta get as much deliciousness packed into this section as possible. Straight in with my olive oil. Oh, you can see straight away that it's nice and steamy in there. I'm gonna squash our garlic as flat as you can, making it easier to cut and just roughly chop it. I don't want it to be too small. Remember, it's gonna be in there for ages, so you don't want it to be too small. Now what we're gonna do is chuck our meat in. I wanna start bronzing and browning our meat. Oh, those onions already smell incredible. Toss that about. Mmm, that smells good. I want a punch of heat and spiciness, so I'm gonna go for two heaped teaspoons of my magic spice, my dried herbs, and I'm also gonna go in with two heaped spoons. One, two. It may seem like a lot now, but remember, it's gonna cook and cook for hours, so you want as much flavor now, because this is your chance to spice some things up in there. So just toss that. Get it all coated and delicious. Mm, you can smell those spices instantly, it's insane. And of course the color is just zips. Cool. And I'm gonna add that punch of paprika I was talking about earlier. I'm just gonna sprinkle it in, just to give it that vibrance. Give it another stir. Yummy, 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 yummy. This layer of salt and pepper, we'll season again after we taste and it's cooked. Pepper. And that is it for the seasoning. The last thing I'm adding is a touch of sugar. A lot of people add their sugar after they've added all the liquid and the tomatoes, but I feel like I wanna add it before that because I want the sugar to caramelize and become delish. Three teaspoons. I'm gonna just do my potatoes here. I've got two medium-sized potatoes. I'm just gonna go with the basic potato because we've got so much flavor going on here. I don't want to add too much of a variety. I'm really, really excited about this rice we got today. It's just something so different and really inspiring when you get to learn about different ingredients and different cultures. And I see it as like a pasta grain. So if you're at home and you're wondering, oh, well, we can't get that rice, I would use risotto maybe, because it's got that same texture, thickness. Or you could also go for couscous. I mean, try any starch up, something different other than just plain old rice. Try and find something in your kitchen cupboard that you don't usually use. I've got some baby cabbage leaves here, and I got these from my garden, homegrown. Just gonna prop that there. Right, all the veg is done and it's ready. I need to go in with all my liquid that I'm adding. So what I've chosen today is a tin of chopped tomatoes, Italian chopped tomatoes, obviously. And I've got some red wine here. Just give that a nice mix there. And that's basically the liquid, put the lid on. And now we just need to wait for it to come to a boil. We can add our veg and then add our hot water. And that's it, sweetie. There we go. Just cover the top, that's what you want to do. And that is it. And now we wait. You don't have to worry about it. Come back, give it a stir every couple of 25 to 30 minutes. And in three hours, you're gonna have the most delicious stew ever. I hope you like it as much as I do. Enjoy, guys. It can be really difficult at times to handle large orders, dealing with people, Maurice, it just can get cray-cray. 
Kelly, how does this personal hotspot thing work? What do you mean? Why do you need personal hotspot? Just use the dongle. Yeah, but it's finished. Money's finished. You finished it already? Yeah. The, what the, are you even doing over there? Nothing, just emails and stuff. Mm, I know what that means. Please pass me the wages file there, Greg. I need to check Biggie's wage. I think I think he was overpaid. This one. Yeah. No, the wage, it says their wages. This one. <sighs> just wait, 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 wait. No, you're annoying me. I actually can't be around someone as annoying as you right now. When you have the answer for Biggie, call me. Other than that, I don't want to know. I love irritating Caddy. It literally is one of the best things ever. Put, just put that bed over there, she takes it every time. Hey, darling. Oh, what now? Camping. What about camping? Let's go tonight. Oh, no. Seriously? That's like the last thing I feel like doing. Why? I don't feel like going and squatting in the bush, Greg. You always do this. Every time I have a good idea, you do this. Do what? You just, you yeah, know, there's no plan. You never want to do what I want to do. I get no, but I'm being serious. Okay, I just don't really feel like doing that right now. I'm pretty hectic and pretty busy. There's a lot going on, and now you want to go and squat on, in the bush and camp. Once the yeah, they'll be fine, man. We can just go and camp. Okay, well, yeah. As long as I don't have to organize anything. I'm busy as it is. Just and I... organize the food and the drinks, and I'll do the rest, except for the linen. The two of us, we love doing a bit of camping every now and again. So, Maurice wants to go camping. It's not my favorite activity, I have to say, but I think it is a great opportunity for us to spend some quality time together. And that's why I've decided today to make my banana and muesli muffins. The first thing I'm gonna do is separate my eggs because I need to use my yolks right away. And I'm just gonna put my whites over here because we're gonna beat them up a bit later so I can fold them to help with the rising. I'm gonna go in with two quarter cups of sugar. I'm only gonna go in with two for now just because my bananas are quite sweet. They're really, really ripe, so I don't wanna over sweeten these because then you're kind of taking the healthy factor out. See how it just fluffs up and becomes creamy? That's exactly what you're looking for. Perfect. And I'm gonna add the final wet ingredient, liquid. Um, and I'm using coconut milk. I love using coconut milk whenever I can. I'm gonna put about, I would say, half a cup of coconut milk in here. Perfect. We're just gonna whisk that all together. Now it's gonna look like quite a lot of liquid now. But remember, this is something you want to make sure we've got a lot of liquid for because there's quite a lot of chunky dry ingredients. We've still got flour, we've still got muesli, we've still got bananas. So the liquid part is pretty essential. So these are really, really dark in color, as you can see, and most people would think they are rotten. They are not. These are seriously ripe bananas. So I'm only using two, but if you don't have super ripe, see, I can literally just squeeze them out here. If you don't have super ripe, I would suggest using a few more bananas than just two because the flavor just won't be as bananary. So I'm just stabbing and I'm gonna leave a couple of chunks because it's always nice when you get a bite out of a muffin and you've got like a piece of banana in there. It's a zips, love it. Pop the banana in. Then let's give this a little whiskey whisk. You can see how rich and like Oozy that is, yum. I'm gonna put this to one side, okay? And I'm gonna go over to my egg whites. Remember, this does not need to be like meringues. You just wanna aerate the eggs because you want a folding action here. I'm gonna beat them a little bit more just before I chuck them in, and I'm gonna just stick them to one side and I'm gonna add our dry ingredients. You can choose any muesli you want, or you could just put bran flakes in. But I like all the chunky little pieces. They're gonna add such nice texture to these. And use your spatula just to fold everything in. I'm gonna go in with flour now. I'm gonna start with a cup. I'm gonna do half. I'm gonna fold, and then I'm gonna do the other half. This is looking great. Look at that consistency. Now we're gonna use our baking powder. I know we're getting some lifting from the egg whites, but I also want to add that little extra. I love puffy, huge muffins. They're the best. So I'm gonna go in with a teaspoon heaped. That's good. Now with our egg whites, I'm just gonna give them an extra little zips. 
use our same measuring cup for our egg whites because I want a cup. Now we need to fold. I don't want to mix at all, no mixing. We have done with our mixing. This is purely folding. I like to overheat it a bit. I want these to come out of the tin. So you don't want to put a tiny bit in, you want to put enough so they're going to bulk out and look huge and delicious. Just as a finishing touch, I'm going to take my allspice and I'm just going to do a little sprinkle. And then right at the end, just to give it a little crunchiness and to make it look pretty, put a little crumble on the top there. I'm going to go and bake these and get ready for my camping trip. I hope you guys enjoy them just as much as I do. I have to admit that camping was the last thing I felt like doing, but after such a hectic day, I feel so relaxed on the way, on the boat, and I'm just so excited to spend the evening with him and squeeze his cheeks. Good, eh? mm. Oh, that baobab tree is amazing. amazing. Eh? It's such a vibe. I wonder how old that thing is. I think it's like 200 years old. I am in the middle of the bush, literally, with a beautiful baobab tree behind me. This is one of our favorite spots. I'm kind of relieved that Maurice dragged me out here to go camping. Um, I'm just glad he's not around to hear me say that. I am going to be cooking a poiki vibe tonight and I'm going to be doing buffalo tail. This is really, really similar to oxtail, beef tail. At home you usually use beef. What's nice about the buffalo tail is it doesn't have any fat, it's really lean, it's got a tiny bit of fat, it's got to cook for a long time, just as an oxtail would. And Greg's going to be making the tent in the back. I'm not setting up the tent, that's his job. So while he's doing that, I'm going to make the deliciousness here. So let's chop up our onion here first. Into decent sized pieces, remember it's going to cook for ages, so you don't want to chop it too small so that you've got no bite from the onion. I'm going to drizzle some olive oil into the pot here. Just a nice glug and in with the onions and let them sizzle. I'm going to take about three cloves of garlic, the most important ingredient creating the flavor base that you're looking for. Just squash your garlic up. I'm adding a chili, beautiful red chili. Now Greg forgot my wooden spoon, so this is my tool this evening. Cool, that's steaming away. Now I wanna chuck in my spices. I wanna boost these onions with so much flavor. I'm gonna use my magic mix I always use. If you haven't made it yet, please make it. It's the best thing ever. Paprika, cayenne pepper, it's got turmeric. It's got really awesome spices in here and I use it with every bit of my cooking. Give it a little mix again. Oh, the colors are amazing and it smells delish. Now, this isn't, an, isn't like an absolute necessity with oxtail, but what it actually does is the flour creates like a crust on it and just makes it more sturdy. So when it's cooking, it doesn't break down too fast and it doesn't burn. It makes a beautiful crust and it bronzes the meat amazingly. And I'm also going to season as well. Remember, seasoning is really important. You want to season the meat, especially when you're putting something like flour in. Toss it all in the flour. Just coat it lightly. It actually will absorb the flour, which is perfect. And then we can chuck our oxtail in. Mm, it smells absolutely delicious. You can smell the garlic and the chili and all those spices that I put in are amazing. I love paprika. Look at the color of that. So it's all coated up, let it do its thing. And while it's doing that, we're gonna chop up and prepare all these vegetables that I've bought. I'm keeping it basic, I'm in the bush. I've chosen today beetroot. 
just because you never get to use it and I've got it growing in my garden, sweetie. I've got some potatoes and lastly, some beautiful tomatoes. So I'm just gonna have just nice sized chunks with your tomatoes. That's the size you're looking for. I can smell all the deliciousness. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, as I'm gonna season now, because remember I only seasoned the meat, I didn't season what was going on in my pot. So I'm gonna salt and pepper. Do not over salt, enjoy the flavors of your food, enjoy the flavors of the meat, enjoy the flavors of everything that you're cooking. Salt completely ruins the flavor if you over salt. Now I'm gonna go in with my red wine. I'm gonna put probably half a glass to just over. Um, so a big glug is probably the best way to measure it. Now at this point, I'm actually gonna put the lid on just so I can bring everything up to the boil before I put my potatoes and my beetroot in. Just want it hot in there. And once it gets hot, we'll chuck all of those flavors in. And then a glug of water, and that is it. For three hours, you leave it. I know it's a long time, but it is really worth it. It's really worth waiting for. It's gotta be falling off the bone and delicious, otherwise it's not enjoyable. You want to be patient with this dish. So start at five o'clock, you've got a couple of hours, and you can go and have a drink and enjoy yourself, and come back to a delicious, delicious buffalo tail or oxtail. So I think this is coming to the boil. Chuck all these in, our beetroot and our potatoes. Just literally throw them in. Last little addition of flavor is sugar. So just give a sprinkle, probably a tablespoon or two. A glug of water, probably two cups, three cups around there. Lid on. And that is it. I'm gonna go and find Maurice and I'm gonna take my wine with me and enjoy my romantic evening out in the middle of Africa. I hope you guys enjoy this dish. <laughs>